cut off thinking at 108 levels of consciousness and you return to that mind before thinking that's almost like uh, finding the source of a spring. My breakup was hard because I loved her. It's hard to forgive myself. Is what I'm doing with my life good enough, meaningful enough? Who are you? What's the deeper truth? Let's do it. Zen means understand myself completely and help others. In order to do that in this kind of complicated world, you become more simple. I feel like I have this affinity with this word Zen, but I don't really know what it is. I heard knowing is a process of addition, but being enlightened is a process of subtraction. That's the world that we live in, in pairs of opposites. You are letting go. So you take your emotional energy that's in your chest, let it, let it drop down to your dungeon to be digested like compost, and then all opposites disappear. And you return to that mind before thinking. Before thinking, that's almost like uh, finding the source of a spring. So the type of meditation that for people who practice Zen do, what is it called? And is it a daily practice, a certain number of hours? When we get up in the morning, the first thing we do is full prostrations. These 108 bows are designed to cut off thinking at 108 levels of consciousness. So at the end of 12 minutes, your mind is refreshed and clear. Can you show us how so to do I'll one? I'll show you one, yeah. Great. And it's, uh, the thing to not do is not don't bang your knees. And so the way to not bang your knees is to place your hands first, then your knees, and then you rock back so that your hips touch your heels palms turned up and then rock forward and back up. And it's 108 of 108, those? that's kind of a magic uh, Buddhist number. I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna sit that one out. Is it a religious thing? I just, I don't know, I just don't feel it. I just, no, I mean, I don't wanna disrespect anyone, I just don't really care to. I just really looked at the physical activity of bowing for 12 minutes and I said, no, I do not want to do it. I didn't want to sit and bow and to my knees and stand up 108 times. I just wasn't into it. It seemed stoic and it seemed to focus on the way that someone else has come into enlightenment as opposed to following your own regimen that's personalized for you. And uh, I felt a little bad because I didn't want to leave my homegirl Natalie hanging high and dry and do it by herself. But um, some things will resonate with you in life and some won't. We have work period typically here at the Zen Center. For example, a lot of jobs in a Zen Center involve cleaning. So if you're cleaning windows, you don't only clean the window outside, you're also cleaning your own mind. I always find um, pride in helping people, even if it's sweeping a porch. Because I you know, grew up in a household where there was a lot of chores. Service is always something that appeals to me. Just, I really liked learning his story, and I asked him what he got out of it. And he just said, it's a clarity of mind, and it's the continuing of that. If I don't practice then, my mind gets cluttered again. And him saying that he practiced silent for years so that he could listen, uh, because he was a blunt person. As soon as he said that, my ears went, Whoop, you know, blunt guy right here. Maybe the whole Dharma thing doesn't appeal to me at all, but I can still take away something. And the meat that I got out of this was just, hey, you know, sometimes it's good to practice just being silent instead of just being so blunt with people. I think it's really great that certain people are drawn to, to living so simply to keep their mind clear. She's a hugger. Are you sweating? Yeah. There's no sweating in yoga. <laughs>